What is the one tournament that you would love to play? Beaver State Fling for nice. me. It's got to be the Beaver State. Hey there, disc golfers. I know we've been talking about this one for a while, and we've got it for you. We're here with an interview with Nate and Valerie Doss. And, Wes, how excited for this one are you? Tell me over 9,000, man. Over 9,000. I'm so excited. I had shared a, a story with Nate and Val, you know, when I, I got added on to Team Discraft and started doing this underground stuff. It was one of my dreams to uh, bump into them out on tour, but I will settle for this because we're going to have some fun. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, how, are, how are you guys, Nate and Val? We're good. Yeah, we're, uh, Wes mentioned it in his story, you know, we, we started full bore going into getting our brewery ready. So we're pretty exhausted. There's been a lot of long hours at the brewery, um, but things are coming along great. It hasn't left much time for disc golf or any disc golf, really. Um, but it's, it's all going good, and yeah, we're excited to get well, get our doors open. We appreciate having Super you. Super psyched to be here, guys. Really appreciate you having us. It means a lot to uh, still be able to 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 kind of be in this and then have the Discraft name on it. So we're excited, definitely. Yeah, we appreciate you guys taking the time out of your day to come on and do this. For all of you guys watching, make sure you guys stay tuned to the middle of the video. Little uh, treat that we're going to be giving away. Pretty uh, sick wasp for you. But let's just uh, dive into the first question that we've got here uh obviously you guys have been playing disc golf for a long time longer than i've been playing probably longer than wes has been playing and i don't know if i've ever heard the story of how you guys actually first got started with disc golf well we have similar stories um but they both took place on opposite sides of the country uh so i grew up uh, in northeast ohio just south of cleveland and my parents both started playing. My dad is actually the one that learned how to play disc golf first. Um, he worked for the city of Medina, and I guess he had heard within the parks, like they were putting in a new disc golf course or some of his friends that he worked with played, something like that. So he went out and played, and they always, my mom and dad always played Frisbee, so that was kind of a, a common thing they liked to do. And when they heard about the sport disc golf, they were, they were all into it. And my mom's always been an athletic kind of person and she always played softball and very competitive, I would say. So when my dad was out there, like she wasn't going to stay at home. So <laughs> she went out there, they both got hooked. Uh, they both started traveling and playing tournaments. And so this was about, the story gets a little fuzzy. It's either she was still pregnant with me when she learned how to play disc golf or I was just born. But uh, at that time, Avery was about eight years old. So he's a little boy. He gets hooked on the sport. You know, they take him out, tire him out. Um, and, yeah, that's just how our family was raised. We'd go on family vacations. Um, you know, we'd travel the country to wherever the world would, would take place. So we'd have our summer trips around then. And, yeah, so we basically took, ap took after our parents. They love traveling. They love doing all that. And so as soon as Avery graduated uh, high school, he jumped in the Winnie crew, um, which consisted of Todd Branch, Al, Al Shack, Sue Dave Stevens, and Dave, and Dave Feldberg. Oh, so they jumped on tour. They were traveling full time, and they were in that core group of people that were full time, committing their lives to it, eating ramen at night. You know, there wasn't a ton of money, in, <laughs> and still not a ton of money in disc golf, but. Um, yeah, so when I saw Avery do it, you know, I knew that was something I can do as well. So, yeah, and the rest is history. And while this was transpiring, you said across the other side of the country is where we're going to hear a little bit about Nate's story. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I grew up in Santa Cruz, California, and, and actually um, my my dad, uh, Mark, he, he, he saw like an infomercial. It was almost on public access TV or something like that. And I was, I think it was Steady Ed Hedrick and Tom Schott. And, uh, you know, he, he said to my mom, he said, you know, I used to play Frisbee in college or whatever. He threw Frisbees around. And so he said, I'm going to go check it out. So he went up to De La Viega and uh, he played a little bit of disc golf. And he comes home and he tells my mom, oh, it was awesome. It was awesome. 
and and he just wanted to keep going back. And she said, well, if you're going to keep going up there, you better take Nathan up there and tire him out. Don't bring him home until he can't stand anymore. So uh, I remember going up there for my first time. I was about seven years old, uh, just, just short of seven. You know, the exact date is really long gone in history now. But uh, that first day I met Marty Hapner, and Marty Hapner gave me my very first disc. It was actually a maroon. It was a pink maroon uh, rock like a classic rock or regular rock. My, my dad still has it in his collection. And, oh, wow. uh, you know, I guess as a young, young boy, I loved it, had a lot of fun. And, uh, that's really all she wrote. I, I played my first tournament probably less than a year later than that. And, um, you know, really it was my dad's really obsession with this golf that drove me to kind of continue to play it. And really the big thing for me in the history of my sort of playing career is that I grew up in a place where there was a big tournament every single year. So the Masters Cup has been one of the biggest tournaments in disc golf for a very long time. It still is. And, uh, you know, I got to see players like Scott Stokely, uh, Ken Climo, Barry Schultz, really just, you know, Jeff and Johnny Listman. I got to see the entire gamut of all the best players in the world come to Santa Cruz every year. And uh, so that, that really just kind of set me off on the right path. And growing up in California, you know, there's always great competition to go up against. And, uh, and so that's kind of, that's my story. It, it really is based really around my dad's uh, kind of passion for the sport. And, you know, just being a young boy wanting to play, play sports. Uh, basketball was always big for me. And I played a lot of basketball through high school. But uh, as soon as I got out of high school, disc golf was really it for me. And and um, I'm so glad that it that it did turn out that way. <laughs> did, you, did you two meet each other through disc golf then? Yep. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Nate's actually a year older than me. So when he graduated high school in 2003, yeah, uh, <laughs> he went on tour right after that. You said like the day after graduation. Yeah, well, I graduated actually. Uh, my high school graduation, jumped on a plane, flew out, played the uh, Discraft Great Lakes Open, out there in Ann Arbor. And uh, then the very next weekend, the tournament was down in Columbus. And Avery and the Winnie crew at that time, we were we all traveled through Ohio and went to actually Cedar Point, which is this amazing amusement park, one of the best in the world. We all went together. In those days, everybody on tour did everything together. And after we went to Cedar Point, we stopped in at the Jenkins compound in uh, just in Northeast Ohio there before heading down to heading down to uh, Columbus. And that was where I met Val for the first time. But, uh, you know, we were friends for just years and years and years. Val was on tour not too long after that, two or three years later. And, uh, you know, Avery's one of my closest friends. We were always together and, um, you know, Val had boyfriends, I had girlfriends. And uh, one day we looked at each other and said, yeah, I really like you. You really like me. Let's give this a shot. And uh, that's all. That's all she wrote on that one too. Uh, Your the rest of later. Here you guys are. Yeah. yeah Let's exactly. Start a brewery. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we'll we'll get into a couple more disc golf questions, but we want to talk more about Bevel Craft Brewing. Uh, how did that idea kind of start for you guys? Where you were like, hey, yeah, let's let's start a brewery and turn this into a you know a career path. Mm. that's all you well yeah i, I mean Sorta. yeah it, it, it ended up it really kind of it maybe it started with me but it, it really ended up being kind of uh, a whole family thing but in 2012 um you know i i had been you know we had been on tour for years at that point and uh, i was really sort of looking for a hobby i was looking for something to do outside of disc golf you know obviously disc golf is a massive aspect of my life and will always be for that matter. But when you do it for a living, you know, you have to find something else in your life that sort of uh, uh, makes you happy, makes you smile, makes you, you know, want to do something. And um, in the middle of 2012, we had gone on a brewery tour of a brewery out in uh, Kansas City and a Boulevard Brewing Company. It was, and it was just awesome. I remember looking at, and I sort of have this engineering mind. I used to be in IT, love equipment, love all that type of stuff. <laughs> and I remember seeing this equipment going, wow, that's really cool. And, and, and this is where the family comes in. You know, Leroy, Val's dad, 
he was always into craft beer and he actually used to brew his own craft beer at a brew your own place in, in his, in his area. So we started talking about craft beer and I just was like, okay, I want to do this. So Val's like, all right, you got to read a couple books. So, you know, I read a few books and this and that. And then the couple days after the world championships down in Charlotte, we went up to Ohio. We had about 10 days off and uh, we went off and bought our first bit of home brewing equipment. And uh, we dropped a thousand dollars on brewing equipment. It wasn't like we just used the pot in the kitchen or yeah. you know, just use whatever we had. We went out and bought the things you needed to buy to, to get started off pretty good. And so we, we did that, and we were actually in Ohio. So we were at Val and and, uh, and Avery's you know, uh, home with Sharon and Leroy, and we just started brewing. I mean, we all just started brewing together. We actually brewed 12 batches of beer. In oh, just wow. uh, over two months, and um, you know it never really looked back. We moved. Uh, the end of the tour happened. We went back to the West Coast. We actually moved from Santa Cruz, where we just simply couldn't afford to live anymore, and we ended up in Bend, Oregon. And uh, a year, a year and a half later, I had gotten an internship at a brewery here, and uh, I was working at night. I was working from four in the afternoon to like two in the morning. And I remember coming home one night and I said to Val, I said, you know, we can do this. Uh, Sharon and Leroy had always talked about owning like a little pub or something like that. And I just said, you know, we can do this. Let, let's start planning it. And the next day we started brainstorming and that was in 2014. Wow. And I think we had our first business plan written in maybe 2015, mm -hmm. you know, and it, it, every off season came around and it was like, this is the year, this is the year we're, we're going <laughs> to, we're going to do it. But disc craft, or uh, disc craft, well, not only disc craft, but disc golf just always kind of pulled us back in. And, uh, you know, our passion for competing, our passion for traveling the world and, and sort of being ambassadors for disc golf um, never wavered, still hasn't to this day. But uh, finally, that opportunity came. We got some, um, some passionate investors and, and started working with a bank and found a location. And, and at that point, we just had to, yeah, then the <laughs> clock started ticking. Yeah. yeah. At that point, we just had to jump in both feet forward. And I will tell you this, though. You know, we've just had tremendous support, not only from the disc golf community, but from our sponsors, Discraft, uh, Grip Equipment, Keen. They, they've just all been so supportive of this sort of transition. Um, you know, it, it was never going to be easy for us to sort of take a step back. Yeah. We'll never disappear. That, that'll never happen. But uh it's been an interesting transition and without those people, I don't think it would have even been possible. So uh, we really appreciate all uh, everybody out there that's given us uh, uh, some support, just like you Wes and that, and that beanie you're wearing. So we, we do appreciate it. These beanies are awesome for anybody that is thinking about buying one, do it. I wear this thing all over the place. It's super warm, super comfortable. So plug for the beanies. They're great. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Uh, so will you guys just be brewing local or will you be distributing as well? Well, to start, we want to be local. Um, I think I, in general, our business plan uh, has us brewing beer that's here. We're brewing hop forward beers. We're mostly IPAs, um, but we want to have them nice and balanced and a whole variety of tastes. Um, but IPAs lend themselves to be drank fresh. So we don't want to spread out too far, have our beer sitting on shelves, and the first time a person tries our beer, they're not impressed. So we want to have beer as far as, you know, within a general area around Central Oregon for now, uh, eventually branching out to Portland, Eugene, closer places like that. Um, we did have it in our plan to can up beer. So we don't have the space in our brewery right now, but um, there's businesses out there that come to your brewery and set up a whole mobile canning system. Um, so we're going to take advantage of that and hopefully can up some beers. Um, there's a few options to distribute from our brewery and send them directly to people's doors. Ooh. I haven't checked the stats lately, but I know there were like 11 states that allowed it. Oregon shipment to their door. So that That's could good. be an option in the future. Uh, and that it's exactly how our business plan lines up. You know, we want that beer delivered right to you so you can drink it as soon as possible, you know, from as, as fresh as it could be from the brewery. So nice. that's our plan for now. Absolutely. 
And do you guys have an opening date for the brewery set? <laughs> yes, we do. Um, actually announced it officially yesterday. Um, our grand opening for Bevel is April 6, 2019. Ooh. And uh, yeah, I kind of had to look around to everybody. You know, we're still, there's still drywall dust and uh, sawdust all over the bar and we're still brewing our first couple of beers. So it's like, are we sure this is the date we're picking? And yeah, April 6th is the date we're going to be ready. Yeah, I think 58 days from now. And, uh, <laughs> but, you know, our families and stuff asked, is that the date for sure? And I said, well, it, it better be. <laughs> so uh, April 6th is, is definitely the date. And uh, no matter what, we'll have some beer that day for everybody to drink. So we'll, we'll, right. we'll get her done. Yeah. <laughs> So opening day, what are some of these beers that we could expect to see on tap? Are you able to kind of disclose some different styles you've got going on? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I and I'm not to, I'm not afraid to say it. I mean, I'm I'm a hop forward guy. That's that's just sort of where I am. Um, but I'm also really driven by balance. You know, I, I am the head brewer. Uh, I have written all the recipes. I I'm not really looking to uh, make IPAs that are just you know all one way or one way or another. We really try to strive for balance. Um, the malt, the hops, and, you know, and really just sort of bring it all together. So uh, we started off with with just our regular standard IPA, and we don't have names for it. I think names are still coming at this point. We need to kind of figure I those out. I got some names. We uh, just haven't committed yet. <laughs> um, so we kind of started off with our standard IPA and then uh, brewed our black IPA. So Ooh. sort of a dark beer. It's a little bit of a kind of a mind game. It, it's dark in color, but it's still light in body. It has a nice hop profile. Uh, and then just today, actually, we brewed our red. And uh, and then kind of moving forward, we'll brew uh, a double IPA, so a high-gravity beer. We'll have, um, we'll have our sessionable beer, so our low ABV beer, a beer that's 4.2%, 4%, somewhere in there. And then we'll also brew um, like a hazy. You know, the hazies from the Northeast are – just yeah. uh, awesome, awesome style. They can be a little bit overdone sometimes, I think. But uh, for the most part, there's just so many good ones out there. So we want to give it a try. Our Hazy series is going to be our single hop series. So we're actually going to do quite a bit of just um, kind of experimentation with that series. Um, so, not, you know, I'm not afraid to disclose what we're doing. You know, we work hard in the brewery. We, we also want to do, you know, hop forward saisons. We want to do, you know, sour, you know, kettle sours, things like that. So um and then eventually work our way into potentially doing barrel aged beers and having some bigger beers but uh you know when you when you start uh when you build a brewery it's it's not it's not everything you imagine it was going to be it didn't, doesn't go exactly the way you planned it but uh, right now we've got three beers in the tank and uh we're just so thrilled about that and so excited about it so uh that's kind of what you can expect and uh, don't be afraid, those people out there that don't like hops. You can still come in. I think our session IPA is going to be really something that I think a lot of people will like, as well as some of the darker, you know, the red and the black, I think will be a little bit of a, a good balance there as well. Yeah, so. we have a, our general contractor says he doesn't like hoppy beers or bitter <laughs> beers, but uh, I mean, he's drank all the beers we like. We're transitioning them. I mean, <laughs> he likes free beer. Yeah, he likes free beer. Beer. <laughs> the best beer. But there's, I mean, there's so many, there's so many types of hops out there. It's all in the way you balance it, and yeah, it was fun today. Actually, Nate carbonated the beer, so right. we we got to taste it as we carbonated it up at different levels, and so it was really fun that we tried our first beer, which yeah, it was a big day. Went well. Yeah, it was <laughs> awesome. Lots and lots of selections, so that's going to be an exciting time when you guys when you guys open. I'm sure. Uh, let's give something away. I told you at the All beginning right. that we had a green wasp. I know my camera's not quite picking up the great color, but this is a swirly ESP wasp. And we want to give it away. And all you have to do is comment down below. I want to know what you thought Nate's favorite shot was or Nate's best shot was that you've seen uh, on any of the coverage. So you can even link a video below. Whatever you think the best shot is, put a time frame in. I want to, I want to take a look at it. What do you think about that question, Wes? Well, there's one obvious one I can think of, but uh, I'll, I'll let them pick. I, I'll let them pick. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure there's plenty to choose from. <laughs> right. 
uh, so we'll transition over to disc golf a little bit. Uh, so obviously the disc golf landscape, you know, over the last year has really changed with big players moving from uh, to new sponsors and stuff. What are you guys' kind of thoughts and feelings about the sort of changing landscape of disc golf? Well, before we launch into that, I, I'm one of the new Discraft players, which is <laughs> yeah. um, pretty cool. I mean, last year was my second year throwing Discraft discs, and that was a shorter year than I previously had. But um, I, I was really excited to change teams, knowing how accepting uh, Mike and Bob were, and how they they were so open to hearing new ideas. So, you know, as I was transitioning out of a sponsor that I wasn't happy with for years and knowing that somebody was wanting to change their whole landscape of their team to suit whatever I needed, um, I thought that was that that's exactly what I needed to hear. That's exactly what I was I was changing teams for. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I'm I'm very much enjoying being a sponsor player of Discraft. So help change landscape in that sense uh, but. Yeah. yeah yeah i mean you know i think i think just you know you know look at the cover i think it's exciting i think it's something for you know the disc golf guy to talk about all two world to talk about i think it, it definitely is exciting but if you drilled out into it a little bit more um you know the way that the players are sort of standing up for themselves and really saying, okay, this is what I think I'm worth and sort of going into those neg negotiations, I think is, is fun. I think it's really cool to see, um, you know, it's still being done very disc golf though. I think there's still a lot of family into it. These companies are not big, massive corporate companies that, you know, there's, you know, there's board of directors. It's still a small group of people making these decisions. And uh, I, I think ultimately one of the reasons we're seeing a lot of these changes is, um, yeah, I think sometimes people are just looking for something new and, and whether they want to, you know, whether it's coming to Discraft or going to Innova or, or, or going to the Dynamic Discs family, you know, I think it's all good because it continues to keep those players sort of engaged and getting a, a nice little reboot. And we've really mm -hmm. seen that with some of these players as well. Uh, you know, I mean, Greg Barsby, I think, is a perfect example. You know, Greg sort of really rebooted himself two or three times over the last decade. You know, Greg's been a friend of mine for a long time. I've known him. But uh, sometimes it's just about finding that right place where you feel comfortable and supported. And and uh, so I think that's one of the reasons we're seeing it. But, yeah, just disc golf in general is, is great. You know, the Internet has uh, been our best friend in that in that regard. So uh, uh, su super exciting and, and really happy to see um that uh, the next generation is sort of taking on that that role yeah well i know we've had a, a good time with it uh pat and i have it's created a lot of good content and uh, a lot of new faces for us to uh get to know and get involved with and stuff did you guys kind of have a hand in pushing discraft a little bit to uh sort of broaden their team as you guys were stepping back a little bit <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I did it. I know Nate was on the phone a few times um, during the biggest negotiation. I mean, you know, I, I guess really what I'd like to say is that, you know, really that my, my, my answer to that is no. Um, Discraft has always been a group of people to me that have, uh, they're very smart. They know what they're, they know who they are. They know who they want to be. Uh, and I can only speak specifically about Discraft and the way that they've always treated me has just been very with a ton of respect and just, Hey man, you keep doing what you're doing. We love what you're doing. And, uh, and so, you know, I don't think they needed any help. I think that they were just sort of ready. Um, you know, and I, I, I think maybe I did inadvertently have something to do with it because it was clear that, and I wasn't going to continue on touring and I, you know, I hadn't won a world championship since 2011. Um, but you know, I always had a lot of consistent finishes and things like that. So, Maybe I did have a maybe I did have a hand in it in in, in that sense, but uh, Bob Julio and, and Mike Wagner and really everybody at Discraft, um, they deserve all of the uh, credit for that. Just who they are and the way they treat people, I think. Uh, no matter whether it was a big name signing like we saw this year, or, or if it was just bringing in somebody new or re-signing the the players, 
Um, they deserve all the credit and uh, they really earned it. So I'm, I'm super happy for them and uh, excited to see all the new names and all the new faces. So uh, c couldn't be happier, really. So I'm pretty sure I speak for almost everyone in the disc golf world right now when I say that I would love to see you guys back play. Um, <laughs> kind of kind of miss it already. Uh, any chance that we would see, you know, hey, I'm going to head out to a major this year. I got a week's vacation. My boss is letting me have it off. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it's tough to say. I mean, I think most of our decisions right now involving going to disc golf tournaments are revolving around doing collaboration beers. Um, so we do have a couple on our docket that we want to go to, that we want to try and plan for. Um, but it, it's kind of crazy to even imagine anything past this point of the grand opening. And that's kind of like our, <laughs> that's, that's the pinnacle right now. So we want to get up to grand opening. We want to get the doors open. We want to get a flow of how the brewery and the tap room is going to be. I mean, we're employees now. We are going to be working behind the bar. Nate's going to be brewing the beer. Um, we have one more partner, um, Justin, who's the general manager of our tap room. So he's going to be there, but we can't let him work all hours every day, every week. We have to be there to help out. And so we'll see what happens. Um, we don't know what the schedule will be, but we'll let you know if we come near anybody's neighborhood and if we're doing a collaboration beer too so it'll be fun for us we'll make business and pleasure yeah i mean <laughs> i mean for me personally I, I a few months ago i would i would answer that question no way um where i am now I, I i definitely feel like i'd like to play a tournament or two um but you know it's really uh, for me personally i can't speak for val on this but you know if i'm going to be at a tournament i'm going to be there to to try to win the tournament you know i'm not just um you know, just showing up as Nate Doss and, uh, you know, this guy who won three world champions. I, I don't care about any of that. I want to be there to try to play and compete at the highest level and have fun doing it. So, uh, you know, hopefully later in the year we can find a little bit of time for ourselves. Uh, you know, we've been putting in a lot of time, you know, just endless hours um, trying to build our business and build our future around this business. Um, but disc golf will always be at the core, really, who we are and what we do. So, uh, you know, it. I, I can make this promise. We will be back on a disc golf course at some point. Um, by that time, maybe there will be a whole, <laughs> a whole uh, slew of players in between us in the first place uh, position. But uh, no matter what, we'll give it our all and and uh, and uh, have fun doing it. They say it's uh, the disc golf is a very very addicting sport, and I think anyone that just watched this segment here, no matter what you had said, they see that hunger and that passion still there and that itch. So. You're gonna you're gonna be on a disc golf course at some point. It's still you, you can just see it. That's that's exciting. Plus, you, I mean, you kind of just casually throw some 10, 30, 10, 40 rounds. It seems like Nate. So I'm sure you I'm sure you'd be okay to hop back out in a little C tier or B tier and see what happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> so as two uh, veterans of the game who have really watched, you know, the exponential growth over the last couple of years, and we kind of talked about the player moves a little bit. Uh, where do you guys see disc golf going? You know, three years down the road, five years down the road. Uh, do you see kind of this continued growth and kind of kind of shift of disc golf, or are we kind of hitting a plateau? I think it's always going to keep growing. Um, I mean, we saw such a huge jump, especially when everybody. I mean, now everybody looks at their phone; they're getting information so immediate. Um, news of players switching teams, like it's basically up to the minute kind of thing and so we have so many so much to grow and i think with everybody pushing each other and even like the media team is getting so much more competitive mm -hmm. we're only going to get more coverage people fighting for these spots at the tournaments the tournament's getting better because they have better media coverage mm -hmm. um I, we always talk about this five-year plan. What's this golf going to be? You know, just wait five yeah. years. It's going to be huge. I, but I think it has it has grown. I mean, it's crazy to see where from when we started. Um, you know, we were kids in the sport. You know, we are playing in the 90s. And that seems like so far for these people that are just getting into the sport um, mm -hmm. and getting so addicted to it. But 
the sport is crazy huge compared to what it was then and how many more people are playing. And I mean, we're opening a business based around the sport that we still have to explain to people, but more people know what we're talking about. Um, so like you said, it's an addictive sport and more people are catching on to it. So I can only see it getting bigger and bigger each year. Yeah, I think Val said it perfectly. I, you know, we're believers. Uh, that's, that's why we dedicate our lives to it for so long. So uh, I, I, I guess the way I would put it, I'm not afraid to see the game grow. Um, you know, I know that it's always tough to sort of judge the, the generations that came before the current generation and what they did wrong or what they could have done differently. So I tend not to do that. But I do think that the people that are sort of involved in disc golf now have a real dedication that I, I, I maybe have never seen and or maybe it's just different from what I've seen in the past. Uh, again, really sort of focusing on media. I think that that's important. Uh, and, you know, there's always going to be those groups of people that want the game to stay the way that it always was. Um, but let's face it, it's never going to change, at least in our lifetime, um, from people showing up to the course and playing together on Saturday mornings or Sunday mornings or Saturday afternoons or just a Tuesday casual round, uh, that's never going to change. Uh, there's no way there's going to be a paradigm switch and all disc golf courses are going to be like ball golf courses. Disc golf at its core is still always going to stay the way. I think that's very cemented in. But the way that people consume it and the way that the top level players, the players that have proven themselves to be the best at it in the world um, are going to have a lot of fun opportunities. And I'm looking forward to seeing that for sure. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, you've said that you've had a lot of support and a lot of help along the way on this adventure. So I'd like to give you guys a few minutes to thank or give a shout out to anybody that you guys would like to right now that has really helped you guys along this journey. Oh, I didn't prepare for this. <laughs> my scroll. <laughs> um, well, just speaking on behalf of Bevel and everything that we've done since announcing that we wanted to start a brewery, um, We've asked for help and the disc golf community has been overflowing with the amount of support that they've given us from the GoFundMe that we started with to going out and doing these collaboration beers and selling merchandise and selling collaboration discs. And now we're doing a barstool program. Wes was actually the first person to, uh, you can buy a barstool chair or table. <laughs> he was actually the first person to buy a chair so that'll have a plaque with his name on it. Team Stamp West, right? Yep, that's right. <laughs> so Exciting. I, it's amazing. I mean, I, we've always felt that disc golf is such a family. And every step of the way, you know, whether we're playing disc golf or whether we're stepping away and starting our own business, disc golf is right there to support us. So I, that, it, that encompasses everyone. So thank you, everyone. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I couldn't have said it really any better myself so i think we would leave it at that really anybody and everybody um that has ever played disc golf or ever will and anybody who has supported us uh just keep keep on doing that and uh no matter what we'll we'll be we'll be here uh working hard to uh to make you happy so uh we do appreciate all the support definitely nice we have our last portion of our interview which is the rapid fire questions so I have 10 questions for you guys. You can both answer if you'd like. Okay. Um, we'll kind of just go through these pretty quick. Some of them might require just a little bit of thought, but otherwise we'll uh, we'll just move through them quickly. So our first one, sours or stouts? Sours. Stouts. <laughs> uh, tougher first hole, hole one at Ledgestone, the dam hole, or the hole one at the memorial? Oh, uh, Memorial. I've never played the damn hole, really, but I know I threw it in the water. <laughs> I did try, so I'm going to go with that one. I was uh, one out of one. <laughs> uh, your favorite single hop to use in a single hop IPA? Hmm. I'm going to say Mosaic. Yeah. That was, man, that's been up on my list. Uh, say again. What 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 was the question? Say it again. Your favorite single in a single hop IPA. What's your favorite hop to use? Oh oh okay okay. Uh, would you say mosaic? Yeah. yeah uh, I'm gonna say Simcoe. 
Love Simcoe. Simcoe's a good one. Uh, if you were to name a disc of your own creation, what would you call it? Tricky one. Uh, <laughs> that one uh, requires a lot of thought. The Golden Bear. Oh. I like it. Jack Nicholas. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Oh, man. I can't think. We'll go Can with I that. Skip. <laughs> skip. <Val> skipping. <laughs> Great disc name. Uh, if you could escape <laughs> for a you. weekend and, you know, just stop time at the brewery, what is the one tournament that you would love to play? Ooh. Beaver State Fling for right. me. It's got to be the Beaver State. Love it. Yeah, Beaver State. Beaver State, nice. Uh, if you only get three discs in your bag to take to the Beaver State Fling, what are you taking? Oh, Challenger, Buzz, Force. No doubt about it. Okay. Easy. I need a putter. Uh, and so my putter is Roach, the Meteor, and a Thrasher. I like it. I thought a Wasp might make it in your bag, Nate. I, I wasn't sure if it was yeah, a Wasp. Yeah, a nice stable Buzz, I can do it all. You know, I got a little bit go. more options with that stable Buzz. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this this is a tough one. I always throw at least one, one toughie in there. Uh, more likely to win a world title first. Ulibari or Andrew Presnell? He's a new name. I'm not sure how well you know him. No, yeah, I, I know Andrew. Um, Yuli. Yeah, I'm gonna say Yuli because I love Yuli. Yuli. Win a world. And you know, I you know, 2019. Coming to Discraft, he's got a new fire, and uh, I think he's gonna do it. So let's go, Yuli. Come on. I like it. Andy throws ringers. Why not? <laughs> there you go. Fat loves ringers. <laughs> Uh, what is your favorite beer not brewed by yourself? I have this question asked a lot, and I just always go back to it. It's the Heady Topper from The Alchemist. Uh, I just absolutely love that beer. Um, it's a Northeast IPA that's just so balanced and awesome. So love the Heady Topper. Plus, I love the name, too. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm loving all the treehouse beers. We got a bunch of treehouse beer over Christmas. And so, you know, what, do, what were we drinking? Doppelganger. Julius. Yeah. Uh, yeah. One of those ones. Something like that. Perfect. <laughs> uh, who is your pick to win the memorial this year? Can you run down the registration no, list? Come on. <laughs> um, I think all, one second. I think all, the big, all the big names are there. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to, as much as I want to say, Yuli, it's really hard to win at home, and I, I know how hard it is to win at home. So I'm going to go with Old Faithful, Paul McBeth. Um, the guy is is incredible, and, uh, you know, let, let's see how these discraft discs fly. Yeah. Well, on the ladies' side, um, Vanessa Van Dyken is new to the team, yeah. and I played on a lead car with Vanessa at the Memorial, so I'm rooting for her. I like her a lot. I ran into her at uh, U.S. Women's. She's so nice. Such a solid game. So I like that yeah. pick a lot. Yeah. Um, and then this one is just for Nate. We got Valentine's Day coming up next week. Did you already get Val something? I didn't, but thanks for putting me on the spot there. No, uh, no, I didn't. But, uh, you know, Valentine's, Valentine's Day for us is every day. So, oh, nice. there you go. Um, but, you know, we'll go out, have a beer together. And uh, it'll be a nice time. There we go. That's all of our rapid fires. Those were those were fun ones this week. If you guys are liking what you're seeing and you've enjoyed the interview here with Nate and Val, make sure you guys are hitting that subscribe button by turning on the notification bell so every time we come up with a new video, you are able to see it when it happens right away. Uh, that would be pretty awesome. Uh, hit the like button if you want to see Nate play a tournament. If we get this to a billion trillion likes, maybe we can get him at a tournament. <laughs> We get to a trillion, I'm there for sure. Yeah. One, one trillion likes. Exactly. We've got it. We've exactly. got that commitment here. Uh, um, and obviously, the most important thing, Wes. Yeah. We all, we all know what it is. The most important thing, make that putt. Make that putt. <laughs> make it. Make it.